In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, a question has been asked. Uh, what did Christianity give to the world? Uh, how would the world be without Christianity? Of course, the second question is irrelevant because Christians do exist uh, since uh, the year 30 AD and so uh, it's useless to say what would have been if there were no Christians so but let's answer the first question namely what did Christianity bring to the world uh, Christianity actually uh, brought uh, to the world the most significant and the best uh, accomplishments and achievements of its history and of its development, of its progress, of its civilization. Let us uh, see what uh, Christianity brought. When we say Christianity, it means, first of all, Christ. Christ, the New Testament. Why do I say New Testament? Because it distinguishes Christianity uh, from Judaism. First of all, the uh, Christianity has abolished discrimination. Uh, Christianity, Christ has abolished the idea of one chosen people uh, as in contrast with nations uh, which were more or less uh, let's say, sorry to say it, animals or uh, second or third class uh, human beings, infra-human beings. Uh, such statements actually uh, we read in, for example, in the, in the Talmud, in the rabbinical writings, that the females of the goyim are impure since their birth, uh, the babies of the goyim are animals. Th this you can you can read. You find yourself, especially in the um, in the booklet called uh, Sanhedrin. Jesus has abolished not only the idea of one chosen people, which is of course a factor of discrimination, whether we admit it or not, but also the idea that only one people, one nation was the child of God. Saying, teaching that all human beings are children of God and not anymore slaves or female slaves of God, the females being the female slaves of the male slaves of God. Well, this principle of universal equality and of universal brotherhood uh, which has later been proclaimed sometime in uh, 1789 by the French Revolution does not come from any other source than Christ than the New Testament and of course than the church the church uh, which has also in spite of objections and a negative sides of its human history, which has worked to abolish uh, slavery. So we see that this idea of uh, God who is the universal father, meaning that all human beings are brothers and sisters and are children of God, this uh, also is to be connected with another idea which is non-violence. The non-violence of Christ, the non-violence which he proclaimed to the future first Pope Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane, he who ever takes by the sword will perish by the sword, Matthew 26, 52. So, in other words, universal brotherhood, equality, non-violence, well, actually, it's meekness, sweetness, are the basic values on which now every single uh, modern or contemporary uh, constitution 
bases itself on. Now, whether it applies it or not, it's another question. Uh, in the, let's say, historic and scientific viewpoint, let's say that uh, philosophy had its home in Christianity, especially uh, taking into, let's say, reconciling uh, Judaism, Christianity with the Greek philosophy and then the sciences. Sciences and the lit literature uh, as we all know or as all of us should know started actually in the monasteries by, uh, by clerics. Uh, apparently some people say the church held the monopoly of science and of uh, manuscripts well, fair enough. So, it is the church, even, let's say, with a bit of jealousy, with a bit of selfishness, let's suppose it, it is the church who, who gave the origin of civilization. Many, um, many uh, towns, many cities were founded on monasteries, uh, on abbeys of monks, and it is from the churches, the cathedrals, that civilization came. Uh, actually, let me give some example. We have some examples. We have in Germany Münster, which means monastery. We have München, uh, Munich, Monaco, which all means, all of these words mean monk. Well, so let us have a look at the Christian countries. Uh, well, they live, most of the Christian countries live in peace even after uh, centuries and decades of war because it is as uh, uh, blessed john paul ii says it is the civilization of love la civiltà dell'amore ladies and gentlemen this is part two of the answer to the question what did christianity bring to the world let's say what did christ bring to the world uh, Jesus himself answers this question in John 10.10. 10. He said, I have come so that they may have life and life in abundance. Well, actually Christianity, Christ, Christianity gave life to the world. Why is that? In him was life and life was the light of humankind. How is that? Because in the pagan world, and also in the Jewish rabbinical world, many transgressions were uh, punished by death. Death sentence. Death sentence in the Old Testament for the Jew who does not have his son circumcised. Death sentence for the one who, who insults his father and mother or mother. A death sentence for the renegades, as we have it in other religions. A death sentence uh, by stoning uh, to the, uh, of the adulterers, uh, and so forth. Well, Jesus refused completely, this we read in John 8, the principle of killing someone as a punishment. Uh, let the one who is without sin, let him throw the first stone. So, as we previously said, not anything by violence, not anything by the sword, the sword only for defense, never for attack, which means not conquering land, not conquering people's faith by the sword and not punishing people's transgressions by the death sentence. Well, someone would say we still have the death sentence in the United States of America. Well, in this, the at least some states of America are not following the example of Christ who refused categorically the death sentence as something irremediable because if there has been any mistake then there is no way to make up for that mistake there is no way
to have this person come back to life whom we have already executed. So, uh, let us then summarize what we said. All the principles proclaimed also, let's say, by Mahatma Gandhi about non-violence, well, actually, they have their root in the Gospel and in the teaching of Christ. And in spite of all the defects, all the, uh, all the mistakes, the Church has been able to uh, impose the principle of non-violence, of meekness, and it became a part of uh, the rights, uh, of the human rights, it came part of the constitutions of all states which respect themselves, and it is one foundation, uh, the very important foundation of uh, of life, namely the respect, respect of human life uh, since the very moment of conception until death. Uh, and as you know, the church is against euthanasia, which is, as they say, the meek, the sweet death, uh, helping people to die or speeding up people's death is also against uh, the Christian ideology. Thank you for your attention.